during the next case, we'll deal uh, with a 61 years old uh, male patient that came to my consultation after uh, I've been discovered a renal cancer, which have been uh, biopsy proven. We can see that we deal with a slightly over four centimeter uh, cancer and we'll try to do a complete ablation of this tumor. We'll use a cryo ablation and we're very uh, careful about getting a safety margin in the internal part of the tumor, which obviously is the more difficult to achieve. I will likely use uh, four ice rod probes trying to get a large volume of ablation. The procedure will be ultrasound guided because the tumor is nicely seen under ultrasound. The patient uh, has been placed in prone position under general anesthesia and I'm now scanning the tumor which is in between the kidney and the liver and you can clearly see this tumor. which is measuring in the range of four centimeter. So during this case, we'll use a four cryo probe, which has a ice rod cryo probe. They have been numbered uh, with step according to uh, where they are plugged and which channel. So we have this needle on channel number one, this needle on channel number two, this needle on channel number three and this one on channel number four. And we are now doing uh, the cryo test and we can look that there is no gas leakage through any of the probe. And soon the system will uh, change uh, its noise and will go uh, to the freezing uh, mode on those uh, four uh, cryo probes. We are now switching uh, to uh, freezing. And you can look at the four ice balls that are growing at the tip of the four probe. And you can clearly see that these uh, four ice balls are roughly the same size. That's only test ice balls, which are obviously uh, much smaller than the ice ball uh, will get uh, during a freezing uh, inside of the patient. We are now thawing the needle. And you can see the ice ball going out of the needle. I will try the, to access the dome of this tumor with my first cryoprobe. You can see the probe inside of the fat, which is approaching the dome of the tumor. I will now puncture. the dome of this tumor and I'm gently uh, placing my probe across the tumor and reaching uh, the edge of the liver. Here we are located for the first puncture and I will try to have at least two other probes. I will start a uh, stick mod freeze and I will place 20% uh, uh, to this cryo needle because I want to be sure uh, that this uh, cryo probe, which is nicely located inside of the tumor, uh, will not move away uh, from its location. I will target probably the lower pole of the tumor. We can already see some ice ball on the dome of the tumor. And going down along the tumor, we can see my uh, cryoprobe number two ready to enter the lower pole of the tumor. We can see the probe at the lower tip of the tumor, which is now located beyond the tumor. I will give as well a 20% freeze uh, to this probe. I will now try to place you know, number three to the external and medial part of the tumor.
here is the frozen part, and here is the part uh, we want to reach. This is a probe reaching the medial and external part of the tumor. I will stick uh, needle number four to the medial and internal part of the tumor. I'm not freezing the fur needle because uh, she is close to my probe. If I freeze this needle, I will not be able to see my target. You can see the needle it's a bit too lateral, so I will redirect to be more medial. You can see the needle which is now going down to the more medial aspect of the tumor. I've been placing four needles, about 1.5 centimeter, one from the other. And I will now get a CT scan to know if I'm correctly located inside of the tumor and if I need an extra uh, fifth needle. Scrolling from bottom to top, we can see that we have nicely targeted the lower part of the tumor with the two cryoprobes which are perfectly located. However, uh, needle number two needs to be pushed by uh, roughly 12 mm in order to reach uh, the deep part uh, of the tumor. We can see on these uh, images uh, that the internal part of the tumor is not covered by the cryoprobe and we will need to place an extra uh, probe in order to be sure to have a safety margin at the internal part of the tumor. We're now plugging a fifth uh, ice rod, trying to cover the internal and superior part of the tumor. As usual, we have to uh, test uh, this needle. So I'm now testing uh, needle number five, while I'm still having my um, stick mod on needle one and two, which are located upper and lower part of the tumor. We are now uh, freezing on the test mode. And you can see the ice ball. And we'll soon switch to the thaw cycle. And the ice ball will be uh, released uh, from the needle as you will see in a few seconds. We have uh, placed uh, a fifth needle and we are now uh, scrolling uh, from down to up. We can see uh, the lower part uh, of the tumor, which is uh, two needle in place. And you can see that needle number two has been a little bit pushed forward and is now reaching the other side of the kidney. Uh, the fifth needle has been placed in this location, and you can see that uh, now we are able to freeze uh, the whole tumor volume. We are now freezing all the needles to full power. Tu nous feras voir, Laurence? So we are now uh, scrolling down to up after uh, 10 minutes uh, of freezing and we can already uh, see the ice ball and uh, hypodense area uh, within the liver which is uh, around our needle and basically uh, this volume of cryoablation looks to cover very nicely uh, the kidney tumor we might have some freeze on the internal aspect of the liver, which uh, basically is not a, a, a big problem. So we can see from the screen that we have used uh, a long time of stick mode. Then we started treatment with 10 minutes of freezing, 8 minutes of passive thawing, and 2 minutes of active thawing. And we are re-freezing for the second cycle that will be uh, 10 minutes as well. The two freezing cycles have been uh, done and we are now doing uh, active sewing. During this time, I'm uh, getting new CT 
to look at the extent uh, of the cryoablation uh, volume. Uh, we have now been treating for two cycles of uh, 10 minutes, and we can see from the CT of 10 at the end of the freezing cycle that we have a large uh, volume of uh, cryoablation. The ice ball is hypoechoic. It's encompasses uh, the location of the tumor uh, very nicely. It's going inside of the liver, as you can see, and hopefully uh, we'll have a complete uh, destruction of this uh, 4.2 uh, centimeter tumor. Uh, it's hard to distinguish uh, the ice ball because it's a multiplanar reconstruction, but however, we can see that the maximum distance in between our needle is uh, 15 millimeter, which is basically the distance in between number three and number five, five being the last needle I've been placed. And hopefully I would have love uh, to have this uh, lower needle slightly upper, but I was not able to achieve a perfect uh, tumor targeting. I will see this patient uh, in consultation in uh, four weeks with a contrast and NCT. And uh, if everything is okay, the patient will be followed uh, every six months with a contrast and NCT, at least for the next four years. On this uh, contrast and uh, NCT obtained uh, one month after uh, cryoablation of the renal tumor, we can see that we have a nice uh, volume of uh, devascularization uh, of the target exophytic tumor from the kidney. There is a minor uh, destruction uh, of some kidney parenchyma in order that we have some uh, safety margin uh, for ablation going all uh, along the tumor to the bottom parts uh, of the kidney. We can see as well uh, some uh, peri-tumoral uh, fat stranding that's probably clearly uh, show uh, where is the limit uh, of the ablation which have been performed. We can see as well that we have uh, some minor uh, cryoablation of some part of the liver in order to achieve some safety margin as well around the tumor. The patient will be now uh, follow up every uh, six months in order to see that there is no uh, local recurrence uh, to this tumor, which is very unlikely given the safety margin we achieve during cryoablation.